Everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to President of Baseball Operations, Alex Anthopoulos. Michael Harris II. We'll get right into it and open it up for questions. And please wait for the microphones. Yeah, I mean, it's a life-changing moment, obviously. And, I mean, for me to be so young and for the Braves to even consider me um, to be a part of this, this organization for that long, it's just it's a blessing and it's just something I can't really put into words. Mark. Alex, less than three months into his career, at what point in time do you start thinking about this and, and at, what, uh, at what point in time do it uh, – let those thoughts accelerate. You know, look, we didn't know when we called him up. Obviously, we, I told him in spring training, I'm not trading you, when we made the Matt Olson trade. I don't know if you remember, but it was, um, you know, it was, I think our club bus was obviously shocked by some of the guys that, that got moved. But uh, we were really excited about him long, long term. Um, and just the way he was playing and, you know, getting to know him a little bit more. Um, and you're asking people around the clubhouse what kind of human being he is. Obviously, the player development staff felt strongly about his character, the makeup, and so on. And um, I think more importantly that, you know, everything I know about Mike, you know, he loves Atlanta, like truly loves Atlanta, whether that's wearing a Trey Young jersey, spring training, I see him walking in with a Hawks jersey, Atlanta Falcons jersey, or he's here for the World Series games. I don't even know how you got the seats. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think... I think it's important when we have a chance to have players that it means something to be a brave and it's important to them for them to be here. So uh, his play obviously is, you know, the, the important area. He just played so well and um, knowing what it meant for him to be here and to have our core. And obviously I want to thank Terry McGurk. He's been signing off on a lot of checks um, that we haven't done here. I mean, certainly since I've, I've been here at the same time. But this, I think it's exciting for, for the fans to know that, you know, hopefully 10, 20 years from now, they all talk about having seen him play in, in a Braves jersey, and you're buying a Harris 23, you know, you're going to own that for, for a long time. 
Uh, hey, Mike, uh, Rashad Milligan from Rolling Out. Uh, I want to ask this question for all the young black kids who look up to you in DeKalb County and the Metro Atlanta area in general, who saw you, you know, who saw this extension and stuff, what is your message to them? I mean, pretty much if you, if you set your mind to your, your main goal and strive every day to, to perfect it and try to reach that goal, I mean, anything is possible. Life moves fast and I mean, if you just, if you stay on your course and you believe in yourself and have people around you that really believe in you, I mean, anything's possible. Go ahead, Justin. Hey, Mike, congratulations. Uh, being an Atlanta sports fan with knowledge of the history of the teams here, what would it mean for you to have this core here be a consistent World Series contender? Yeah, um, thank you. And yeah, I mean, we have, we have a great group of guys, guys that are already locked up here for a good amount of years. So, I mean, <laughs> he did he did his part. I mean, Terry McGurk did his part and they're just really good at um getting good guys to stay here because a lot of people want to play here and we have a group a great group of guys that want to play with each other. So, I feel like it it just helps um with players making decisions long term and actually wanting to be here and play baseball here. Go ahead, Dave. Alex um how important to you is obviously winning the World Series now, but being sustainable for you know a decade and, and looking at the big picture always when you do these contracts rather than just this year and next year? Yeah, I, I you know obviously I worry about a lot of things in this job, but the, the number one thing I worry about is being sustainable, you know, and being competitive each year. I've said I've said this story before. Um, you know, when I first got to Atlanta, I listened to talk radio. I'm trying to get a feel for the city, the market, um, and I remember seeing Mer Mer Mercedes Benz half empty midway through a season and, you know, and the Atlanta Falcons were playing in the Super Bowl two years earlier and it was eye-opening to me that you know I felt like you need to be a consistent contender in, in this town now when you are it's incredible the fan base is incredible um, and what's been done here and built here with the battery and the ballpark and all those things but um, obviously we're trying to win each year but you know the most important thing is how do we sustain it and have a critical and a, a sustainable long-term team and it's important that guys want to stay here and I think um, if we can become one of the best places to play um, then obviously we'll be able to keep players, we'll be able to sign players and the fans will certainly enjoy it. Kelly? Uh, Alex, kind of following up on that what's kind of your, been your philosophy? Obviously you all have done things a little bit differently here going out with guys before they're to free agents even before their arbitration to, to sign them to these deals. Obviously they kind of work both ways, but just a little bit of your thoughts on how you've sort of set this up, you know, to keep guys here, the whole core of the teams here for five, six more years. Yeah, I mean, look, there's no doubt the fact that our payroll has gone up each year um, is huge. That's a big part of it, obviously. You know, you, you're trying to keep as many guys as you can. You're trying to sustain it. Um, and that's a credit to the fan base. The fact that our attendance keeps climbing year, year after year, the fan base support. We talked about it at the trade deadline, certainly now. Um, that's a huge component to this. And obviously Terry McGurk uh, signing off on these deals. You know, these are big commitments that we've made the last five, six months. So um, I think it's, it's a combination of those things. But again, we have to make sure that we build a team and not just one or two great players or three or four. Um, we need to put a winning product out in the field. And it is a balance. It is a balance to try to, to make it all fit and still, still have a deep club. I think the one thing you see in our sport is it's not the NBA. You know, you can't go get a LeBron James and immediately become a contender. Um, you need a deep 26 man, deep 40 to be competitive. So um, if we can keep these guys and the fan base can identify with these guys and guys that care and want to be here, we're going to try, try to do it. Uh, yes, uh, Mike, once again, Chris from the M Braves last night, he tweeted out how just a few months ago you were taking buses to and from Pearl, Mississippi, and now you're here. Just thinking about those last few months, how has this journey been for you, man? Yeah, like I said, life moves fast, so I mean, uh, it still hasn't really caught up to me. I'm just living in the moment right now, and I guess when the season's over, I actually look back and notice how uh, everything played out this year and how quick it actually moved. And I mean, it's just it's just a blessing to actually be up here talking right now and putting on a Braves jersey every night. Go ahead, Kelly. Mike, congratulations. I just want to know. There aren't a lot of your buddies, I'm sure, that are going through a decision quite like you've had to do this last week. Can you describe sort of what those conversations were like for you and this group right here in the room, what they've meant to you to get through this week and kind of finish this deal? Yeah, uh, thank you. And um, 
Yeah, a lot of my a lot of my buddies are like really excited for me, really happy for me, and uh, that's just how we are with each other. Everybody's we're trying to uh, motivate each other to be the best, be the greatest, be at the top. And I mean, yeah, I feel like that really motivates them to actually want to go out and and do their part and whatever they want to do in life and strive to be the greatest and whatever. And I mean, the people that are sitting here today, I mean, they support me every day, day in, day out. I mean. Do whatever, do whatever it takes for me to uh, get what I need or something to help me. So, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of love in this room right here. And it's just, I don't know, I can't really put it into words. It's just unmatched. Go ahead, Zach. Hey, Mike, what's your earliest Braves memory? And, and would that young man believe he's at this point today? Um earliest I mean I just remember going to a lot of the games at um how did I just forget the uh, the old stadium's name oh Turner Field um <laughs> yeah I would, I would go to I would go to a lot of the games and uh we had a wiffle ball game on the field in the outfield uh when I was about six seven so just being on that field I mean as as kids that young and uh just being able to be on that field actually like was a great moment and just to see myself here now playing on I mean the new field but just being able to put on that Braves jersey after being that young and watching for so long and rooting for all the players that's been through this organization and had success so uh, for me to actually be in this position is kind of crazy. Michael congratulations uh, you talked about life moving fast obviously and that you haven't really had a lot of time to process but what were the emotions like I know you're cool calm and collected but I know it had to be emotional whenever you first found out that this was going to be a reality for you thank you and honestly no I don't I don't think I even have emotions uh, <laughs> like like when I got drafted I didn't have any emotion I was just staring at the TV everybody else was running around the living room and I'm just the one person standing there, uh, no emotion. So it's like, I don't know, maybe i notice it later, but I don't really show emotion in, in the moment. But I mean, it's all, I'm always going to feel great about it, but I might not show it. And clearly you're having a lot of fun with this team. I think everybody knows the meow thing by now. <laughs> uh, you know, how much fun are you truly having? I mean, it's hard not to have fun with these guys. I mean, we go out there and we're playing good baseball and winning. So winning games and having a, gr a great group of guys is... I mean, it just makes it better and makes you want to go out there and play harder every night. Go ahead, Justin. Oh, okay. Uh, for Alex, other than just winning, obviously, what does it take to build a culture where guys do want to stay here long term and it does become a desirable destination? I think it's a credit to the staff, the people we have around here. You know, I'm not down there in that clubhouse every day. I'm not with these guys day in and day out. So I think it's hiring good people. That's the support staff, the people that work in the clubhouse, people that deal with the families. Um, you know, all those things make it a great place to play. So, you know, we obviously we have a tremendous ballpark and so on, and winning is certainly very important too. But, um, and look, I, I think having players that are quality human beings and high, high character, I know I've had a lot of our players tell me they, they're very grateful for the fact that we have a good group of guys and we do spend a lot of time trying to put a good group together, guys that, that do get along and it's fun to come to work day in and day out. That's what I've been told from the players. So, um, I think the people ultimately make it. I don't think it's a we come out with a script and say this is the blueprint, this is how we're going to act. You just continue to flood the organization with quality people, whether that's support staff, whether that's players. You flood it, flood it, flood it, and that makes it a great environment. I don't think it's, there's anything more than that. So I think I, I hear it all the time in sports. Oh, you create culture, create culture. I, I don't think you do it that way. I think you have the right individuals in the organization, both on the field and support staff, and that creates it. Go ahead, Bo. Michael, can you tell us what that first conversation with your parents was like when this became a strong possibility? Yeah, I feel like I feel like it was the same conversation I had when I was trying to decide on what college I wanted to go to. Uh, they really left it up to me and was just there to support me no matter what decision I made. They were just, I mean, yeah, just there and believed in my decision and what I could what I could decide for myself and my future. So. Uh, I mean, yeah, they're just they're just a good good support group, and I mean, I don't know, I don't know um, what I would do without them. Meow. <laughs> Is that free? Or are you getting paid for that one? That's free. <laughs> uh, 
Alex, I know today is about Mike, but I'm sure you get the question every time you all have done one of these signings, because I know I do. Uh, what about a, is there any update on the shortstop that you have that uh, is also everybody, I'm sure, is wondering if he's going to be back next year? If, any he, any yeah, updates I just, on that? It's the standard answer. That I was. We want to keep all these guys. Uh, we're going to work to try to keep all these guys, and we'll, we, you know, we, we really like the guys on the team. They're great players. So other than that, obviously, today's about Mike. I don't want to take anything, but you know we're going to continue to try to, you know, Mike Austin. We're going to continue to try to keep as many players as we can. Marie, go ahead. Alex, clearly you've been very busy within the last month from trade deadline. Austin, Mike, how good do you feel about what you've been able to accomplish in this short amount of time? Um, you know, I just I view it as um, obviously the goal is to win, clearly, but I do think there's a there's an obligation to the fan base, to the community, to, to have a core in place and to keep players. Together, you know, I'm a, you know, Mike's a fan of teams in Atlanta. I've definitely become a fan of teams in Atlanta, um, just with my son uh, and going to games at the, you know, the Hawks, the Falcons, and so on. I think it's, I think it's key. I think, you know, guys that want to be here, uh, guys that love the organization, love the city. I think that comes out to the fan base. It comes out to their teammates, to the, the community. Um, I think this is an amazing sports town. I heard all kinds of things when I got here, and I think we showed it during the World World Series, just with with all those things. So. Um, of course, we're trying to build a winning team, but I think beyond that, having the right people that are here long term, that fans can really attach themselves to, I think is very important. Thank you. Michael, when you think about the year 2030, I mean, personally, that feels like that's not even a real year that's going to happen. Is that how do you kind of wrap your mind around this deal and the things that you kind of had to go through considering getting to that point? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely never thought about the year 2030, but um, that's far. Uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm just glad to be able to stay here in Atlanta for that long. And, um, yeah, I just want to go out there and play for these fans. They're a great group of, I mean, great, great fans. And, I mean, they show up every night and, I mean, they do their job and it just makes it, makes it easier for us to go out there and play for them. Any last questions? Go ahead, Maria. Okay, my last one's for Alex. Um, you know, you obviously know how good of a baseball player he is. You wouldn't have signed him to the deal that you did. What do you like about his character? Uh, I like that he shows no emotion. Seriously. The fact that he doesn't get rattled. He's very even keeled. Um, I think the biggest thing when you're doing deals like this is will they change? I even when we walked home, I'm like, don't change. He's like, I'm not. And um, I think it's important. I think it's just, um, I think once you do deals like this, you're telling the other players in the clubhouse what you value and who you value and how they go about it. And you know, I think Mike's just going to continue being who he is, but just the consistency, the professionalism, um, the way he goes about it, the way he carries himself. You know, I love the fact that he's tight with his family. You know, you see on the field fireworks with 400 f family down there, and he's out there every time I watch from my office. And he still has not forgotten who he is or where, where he came from and all, and all those things. So I think it's just more the way he raised. Um, va just values. Um, I think it's very important, and I think we're telling the fans, we're telling the players in our clubhouse, he's a core guy now. He's a pillar, and um, the way he goes about it is hopefully how some of the young players that come up behind him are going to see that th that those are the things that we want in this organization going forward. Go ahead, Kelly. Michael, to hear you are a pillar of this organization, how does that feel? Yes, I mean it's surreal just growing up. <clears throat> um, yeah, just growing up, being a fan of all the Atlanta teams, and to actually just be here and, I mean, have a have a deal in Atlanta where I don't have to I don't have to go anywhere. So, being here my whole life, I don't know. It's I don't know how to feel honestly because it hasn't really kicked in yet. But uh, I mean, it's just a blessing, and I just I just want to thank the Braves and Terry McGurk and uh, Alex for this opportunity, and I'm I'm gonna try to make the best of it. Any last ones? Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thanks, Appreciate everyone. Congrats. Meow. Meow. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. I'm Terry. Terry. Awesome. Yeah, we, we had a conversation about two months ago on the elevator. Wow. Thank you. He's way well spoken, said all the right things.